In many of the previous videos, we have talked a lot about virtual machines, type of virtual machines and series of virtual machines. In this video, we are going to take a deep dive on virtual machines and understand the resources that are needed when creating Azure virtual machines. Not just that, I will give you a lot of information why and when you should actually use virtual machine in the very first place. This is going to be a power packed episode for you if virtual machines are your area of interest or in case you are preparing for AZ900. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In today's video, we are going to understand all the common resources that are needed when dealing with Azure virtual machines and this is our section 2.2.3 and here I would like to remind all my viewers that the link to download a free PDF file with the latest syllabus for AZ900 exam is right there in the description box. So please feel free to download and keep a copy with you. In the coming episodes, we are going to cover section 2.2.4 which is to describe application hosting options including Azure web apps, containers and virtual machines. Then we will cover section 2.2.5 which is to describe virtual networking including the purpose of Azure virtual networks, Azure virtual subnets, pairing, Azure DNS, VPN gateway and express route. And the final section that we will cover is to define public and private endpoints. And friends, please do consider subscribing to the channel as we bring a lot of quality content on Azure and its certifications that would surely assist you in shaping up your cloud career. Like any other cloud resource, Azure Virtual Machines are also one of the several types of on-demand scalable computing resource that Microsoft Azure offers. Now you can think virtual machines as purchasing a laptop in Azure Cloud, a computer within a computer. See virtual machines simply imitate the behavior of another computer but inside the cloud. Azure Virtual Machine gives you the flexibility of virtualization without having to buy and maintain physical hardware that runs it. Once inside the virtual machine environment, the user has access to the same applications, user interface and settings as if it was their own computer. It's now the time we understand some key benefits of virtual machines and then I will tell you the scenarios or the use cases when to use virtual machines. The first one on the list is lower hardware costs. See many of the organizations do not fully utilize their hardware resources and that's why it makes perfect sense for them that instead of investing in another physical server or hardware, these organizations can spin up a virtual machine inside the Azure cloud. So this means that virtual machines replace the traditional hardware with virtual environments, infrastructure and storage and thus they eliminate the upfront cost of expensive hardware. I hope you are observing the concepts in between the line. See when I say the virtual machines eliminates upfront cost, this means that we are talking about reducing or eliminating the capex or capital expenditure. Always remember cloud works on the concept of operational cost or OPEX also known as pay as you go. Now friends, CAPEX versus OPEX is quite a critical concept to understand as there will be many questions in AZ900 exam around this concept. So watch the part 4 of this series to understand details of CAPEX and OPEX. And friends, as a side note, can you give me one Azure service which comes under CAPEX and not OPEX? Let me know your answers in the description box. Let me see how many of you are actually serious about Azure learning. The answer to this question will be revealed towards the end of this video. The second great benefit of virtual machines is customization. Each department in your organization can set up and configure its virtual machine the way they want. Virtual machines provide great flexibility and personalization and they can be customized with just the apps and computing power that a particular worker needs. The third benefit on the list is time savings. See maintaining hardware, infrastructure, updating operating systems 
apps and other similar tasks are now the things of past. When you deploy virtual machines in Azure or any other service provider like AWS or GCP for that matter, your service provider takes care of everything at once. The result? Your virtual machine are always kept up to date and you save tons of time, efforts and of course substantial cost. Moving ahead on number 4 we have low downtime. With virtual machines, if the host goes down unexpectedly, you just move your virtual machine from one hypervisor to another on a different machine. Virtual machines are very portable and they are great solution for creating backups. More on backups is coming up in the very next section of this video. Scalability, a important benefit of virtual machine is at number 5. More demand, more workload and scalability have always been a headache in conventional data centers. With virtual machines, well, they allow you to scale your apps easily by adding more virtual servers to distribute the workloads across multiple virtual machines. And friends, in episode 12, we talked about how can you use Azure virtual machine skill sets to bring true scalability for your applications. As a result, you can increase availability and performance of your apps. In case you are interested in this exciting feature of Azure Virtual Machine skill set, do check out the part 12 of this series. The links are there in the description box. And finally, let's talk about security. I mean, how can we forget security? The ability of virtual machines to run in multiple operating system. So using a guest operating system on a virtual machine allows you to run apps of questionable security and protect your host operating system. So these are the six major factors why should you use virtual machines. And now let me give you some insights on the scenarios or the use cases where can you use Azure virtual machines. Most common use is backup. With virtual machines, businesses can easily backup or store data on a virtual machine. The best part is that instead of backing up individual files, the entire virtual machine can be backed up all together in one shot. And remember, virtual machine is not hosted on a local computer. Instead, all the data and the files used within the virtual machine are accessed over a network. This model allows businesses to replicate or backup entire virtual machines. Secondly, we have failover and recovery. As I just mentioned, a virtual machine backup consists of an entire virtual machine and not just individual files. This means that you can seamlessly fail over a virtual machine without losing any data. Restoration of a virtual machine is quick and efficient. This greatly reduces the downtime due to the natural disasters or the man-made disasters like cyber attack or any other incident that can cause an outage. The third place where you can use virtual machine is to provide workspace mobility. Virtual machines enable employees to access their customized virtual desktop and applications from any location anytime. The rise of remote workforce makes this a powerful tool that enables workers to stay productive no matter where they are. Okay, so now you want to try out a new operating system including the beta releases. Virtual machine is a great option for that as well. And want to quickly spin a new environment to run your dev or test scenarios? Use virtual machines. So these are five scenarios where you can use virtual machines. I'm sure that you already understand. These are just few of them. And if you have more such scenarios where you can use virtual machines or maybe you are already using them in different scenarios, why not share those scenarios in the description box so that all the viewers can benefit from your experiences. Okay, so now I hope that you have gotten a real grip on Azure virtual machines. What are they? Why should you use them? And when should you use them? So what is the next learning we have for today? Well, now let's understand the top three design consideration that you must think before creating any virtual machine. The first thing that you should consider before creating any virtual machines is locations. Now, like any other Azure resource, there are multiple geographical regions and location around the world where you can create Azure virtual machines. So tell me what according to you would be the best location to deploy your virtual machine. See, in most cases, you should always deploy them close to your customers or in some specific region in case you have some legal restriction or any other compliance to be followed. 
Here, it's very, very important to understand that in case of virtual machine, the location specifies where the virtual hard disk will be stored. Secondly, you must consider availability, a decisive consideration when creating virtual machines. And friends, under the availability, there are two major sub consideration that are availability zones and virtual machine skill sets. Let me brief you on both. Availability zones are physically separated zones within a Azure region. So when you deploy two or more virtual machines in different availability zone, then you get a guaranteed uptime SLA of 99.99%. Coming to the virtual machine skill sets, they let you create and manage a group of identical load balanced virtual machines. We have discussed both these concepts in great detail in part 8 and part 12 of this series. Please consider watching both these parts. Post this video to understand Azure architecture in great depth. Now let's discuss sizes and pricing. Your workloads will decide the size of virtual machines that you use. And please understand the size that you choose then determines the factors such as processing power, memory, storage capacity and network bandwidth. Azure offers a wide variety of sizes to support different needs that you may have. Now let's talk about pricing. Azure charges an hourly price based on the virtual machine sizes and operating system. But what happens if you use a virtual machine only for a partial hour like few minutes? Well, for partial hours, Azure charges only the minutes that you have used the virtual machine. After all, it is a consumption based model. Important point to remember is that storage is priced and charged separately. More on pricing is coming up in the next section. And now comes the very important section and that is to understand resources required for virtual machines. See, virtual machines are not singleton resources. By that, I mean that when you create a virtual machine, a lot of other resources also get created. It's a critical concept to understand when dealing with virtual machines, else you will lose control of your data and cost. To cut the long story short, it's gonna be a total mess. So watch this section with full attention. To start with, well, first and foremost, always remember that like any other Azure resource, virtual machines also live inside a certain subscription. Not to forget that there must exist a resource group under which virtual machine will reside. So these are the two resources, subscription and resource group that must pre-exist before you create a virtual machine or in fact any other Azure resource for that matter. Now when you create a virtual machine, there must always exist an operating system based on which you create your virtual machine. Now we all know that virtual machines can be created on two flavors of operating system and that is Windows and Linux. But let me ask you one question here. Where is this operating system residing? Well, for that, we need something which Azure calls managed disk, also sometimes called OS disk or operating system disk. And this managed disk, which is hosting operating system, is connected to the virtual machine. So now you have a virtual machine and an attached managed disk with an operating system. What next? Well, then comes the data disk. See, when you need data to be permanently stored on your virtual machine, you need a data disk. And friends, please remember data disk is not mandatory, but then in most cases, we need data persistence. And for that, data disk is a must. Okay, so now our virtual machine also needs some connectivity. And for that, we have a virtual network divided into subnets. But how exactly your virtual machine will connect to the network? Well, for this, we need a network interface card or NIC. And of course, not the physical, but the virtual network interface card. Please pay attention. This virtual network interface card is connected to your virtual machine and on the other end connected to a subnet in your virtual network. And now friends, in case your virtual machine is public facing, you would also need a public IP. It's very important to note that public IP is also a resource in Microsoft Azure. The public IP is connected to your virtual machine. Now connecting virtual machines to a network is good, but security is paramount. So here we need NSG or network security groups 
Now NSGs can be either connected to NIC or the subnet. The good practice is to connect your NSG on the subnet level. Okay, so now you see that when creating virtual machines, there are so many other Azure resources that are created. Some of them are implicitly created like OS disk while the others are explicitly created like data disk and public IP. Hmm, so are we missing something? Now, if you're already thinking about the cost aspect of these resources, I must congratulate you because this shows that you are on a good learning path. Cost is a major consideration for all the companies. So always be aware of it. And now on your screen, you can see that we pay for virtual machines. We also pay for OS disk and data disk. So these components have a direct cost. We do not pay for virtual networks or virtual NIC as such, but we surely pay for the egress traffic going out of the regions or if there are multiple availability zones, we do pay for the communications between them. Also pay attention that we also have to pay for the public IP. Okay, so friends during the video, I asked you a question. What is one Azure service that comes under CAPEX and not OPEX? Well, that service is Azure Reserved Instances. Simply put, Azure Reserved Instances is a virtual machine on Microsoft Azure Public Cloud that has been reserved for dedicated use and it significantly reduces the cost up to 72% compared to the pay-as-you-go pricing with one year or three years terms for Windows and Linux virtual machines. And in case you want to deeply understand what are Azure Reserve Virtual Machine Instances, this is the Microsoft documentation. The link is available in the description box and in the pinned comment. So that was all for today. A lot of interesting and important concepts were covered today related to virtual machines, their importance, benefits and the use cases to understand where exactly you can use virtual machines. We then understood major resources that are created along with the virtual machines, both implicit and explicit. I also explained the cost part that is associated with all these resources. Now I am sure that this episode today will surely help you with virtual machines, which are one of the most important and use as your resource and also very important from the exam point of view. So please like the video more and more so that it can reach to the maximum Azure learners. And in case you are new here today, please do not miss to subscribe and press that bell icon as we keep bringing loads of interesting videos to make your learning a little bit easy and interesting. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.